Hi, my name is Ivor van der Zand, SAP Analytics Belgium, and today I'm going to show you the financial performance dashboard I created using Design Studio version 1.6. This is the landing page that has drop down boxes. The structure of the data is as follows. Uh, in terms of metrics, we have uh, actual revenue, budgeted and planned revenue. We have the deltas uh, of those measures. Um, <clears throat> revenue is made by a city and a number of cities form a country. So we have also geo-related information. We have also the order lines available. Uh, and of course, the time uh, per date, month quarter rolling up to a year. There was uh, three years of data in here and very important, I'm connected uh, real time uh, onto a HANA BW system. Um, again, the landing page that composes of two drop down boxes where I can select the country that I'm interested in. And if I select that, the, uh, the data will automatically adjust as you see over here, including the graph for the revenue KPI tile. This is the revenue about the incoming orders. And below we have a small message from the management. The forecast accuracy, what is the gap between revenue and forecast? And what is the gap between budget and uh, revenue? So I can select different countries and the numbers will uh, adjust accordingly. And the same goes, I can also <clears throat> change the highest level of PNL. Uh, so this is the group level, looking at only cost uh, of sales, for example, or uh, only local, looking at local expenses. If I select back all members, uh, I have a print button where I can print um, my application and at any moment in time, depending on what uh, page I am, I have five pages here, like you see over here, I can bring the data to the self-service component called Lumira. On the right hand side, some uh, management information using dynamic text. If you look at this number, if I change the uh, boxes, you will see that the number also um, automatically uh, adjusts. What you can do the moment that the user wants more detail for a certain tile, uh, he or she can tick the tile. So if I tick this tile, you see that I get more detailed information over here. I have, if I hoover, I have the revenue per month. Um, and uh, in yellow, you have the, the delta of the actual versus budget. On the right hand side, similar graph, but then split it out per PL. Uh, detailed element, yeah, cost of sales, for example, if I hoover, you see them um, uh, coming up. What I can do, these two graphs are dependent. So if I select a certain month, have a look at the right hand side, you will see that the chart at the right hand side also automatically filters to the month I select. So if I tick the other one, it selects to the other month. If I tick month seven, it selects month seven. With this little uh, button over here, I can go back to the initial situation. So that's the details if I tick the revenue tile. I can also tick the forecast accuracy tile where I built in some color coding indicators. As you can see, I set thresholds and icons that indicate whether the uh, Delta actual plan uh, is in a stable state, uh, uh, when it's getting better, indicated as green, or when the delta gets bigger, indicated as wet with the arrow um, uh, down. The same goes for the um, difference between actual and forecast, also threshold indicators. I can right tick this graph to filter members uh, or to bring in totals, for example, or for example, I can swap the columns with another measure. For example, I could have a look at this per month. And um, so over here you can see per month and I can even drill down if I uh, want drill down from month to, for example, the date. And then you will automatically see the date, uh, more lines. So also the cost tab automatically changes with a scrollable bar. So that's for forecast accuracy. And then the last element over here, budget gap. I can take that one too. And over here, I've uh, brought in a sample of 
have a uh, graph indicating uh, in green the delta, actual versus plan, and the revenue and the budget. And again, at any moment in time, these uh, drop down boxes uh, are applicable and adjust the data accordingly, as you can see over here. You can hover the data to get some more background. If I go back to the second page, I take the little white um, circle over here. And over here, I've <clears throat> made an example of, again, <clears throat> um, the different forecast uh, delta records split per PNL group element in a um, uh, pie diagram. And uh, what I can, say, uh, can do on the right hand side, you see a heat map where I have um, put city versus month, as you can see in the examples with color coding. So I can easily see that Zurich in month seven has a very high delta between forecast um, and, and revenue. And on the top hand side, you have a bullet chart again using the same metrics just to show you the capabilities of the product. What I can do, these charts are again interdependent. I can tick one of these pie pieces and then, then it will drill down to a lower level called PNL element. As you can see over here, you see it now drills down into that specific element that I indicated and accordingly also the heat map and the um, uh, bullet chart over here uh, drill down in the same manner. Yeah, this little button I created to drill up again. Another element that you see over here is that I have built in a chart picker, meaning that the user can simply click one of all the available charts over here to change the layout of this chart. So if I take bar chart, it automatically change into a bar chart. If I take radar chart, it automatically change into a radar chart. I can go for a stacked one, for example, <clears throat> and still the drill down that I just demonstrated to you is working. And again, also these uh, elements over here are still working if I want to look at this specific PNL group element only for Italy, I can take that and the chart will be automatically adjusted as you can see right now. In the next page, I show you two other um, ways of applying online managed dashboarding using two components on your left hand side. This is the new scorecarding component that is embedded in Design Studio 1.6. What does it say? Over here I can choose the chart type. This chart type says for France, for the city Paris. I have six months of uh, uh, records for this specific year uh, containing Delta actual versus plan. Apparently the city didn't have uh, actual numbers for all the month with the lowest being this one and the last being that one. And over here you see the trend. Yeah? So I can go as detailed as you wish. And over here I can just tick the different uh, numbers on the below hand side and it goes through the application with all the months. Again, I can in my design adjust the structure and even get a lower detail if I wish. On the right hand side, I show you an um, example of how you can use cross tabs to uh, drag and drop data. For example, if I'm interested to have the PNL element over here, I just drag and drop it, and you will see that my uh, graph will automatically adjust if I just untick this box so that it's um, <clears throat> um, uh, all the changes are applied immediately. Again, I just drag and drop it back. And if I say, well, I want to see this per country, I just drag and drop the country in there. If I go back to the original selection uh, over here, uh, and by the way, I can also change the measures that I want to embed. I can show you some more capabilities of a dynamic cross step. If I, for example, right tick Geneva over here, I can again swap my axis like I want. We just show with the drag and drop facility, but I can also do online a drill down to the lower le level of data. For example, if I want to drill down to the actual date, I just tick it <clears throat> and you see how quickly this works. So the end user can quite easily work and scroll and explore 
all the data that is in the system and that is quite a lot in this example. You see over here that I also uh, uh, built in two little buttons to swap this graph. If I tick this one, it swaps to another model of chart um, with uh, other elements where I again use these color coding indicators with threshold. I think over here is the forecast accuracy uh, in percentage where you can see that if it's below 93% or lower, I indicate it as wet. And the same goes if it uh, is above 105%, I also indicated it, uh, it as wet. And again, I can over here uh, choose to filter certain members. If I take filter, I can simply select what members I want to see, and now it only filters to the members that you just saw. Going to the fourth page, page of this application, we are going to look at uh, geo information. This is a very simple uh, example that I made of a geo map where you can see I can use different layers of data, where you can see the different countries that apply. Over here, it's revenue driven. I can tick the button and then it automatically zooms in. I can readjust my chart very easily and focus on it. And again, you see here uh, how quickly it works. And again, I can choose the different drop down boxes. So these are the geo capabilities. There are way more geo capabilities, which I will show you in a next demonstration. Going to the last page over here. There's another example that I've built in. On the last page of the financial performance dashboard, I've uh, used some other techniques that you can easily apply in Design Studio 1.6. Over here, you see a multi-grouped uh, uh, selection box where uh, I've listed all the cities. This is a city KPI metric style, with again, forecast delta, delta actual plan, uh, it's now selected for all cities. If I, for example, tick Zurich, you will see that everything is automatically adjusted. So we have over here, again, a graph with uh, very clear color coding indicators. You can hover to get the data elements. Uh, this is the, the yellow line is the delta actual versus plan uh, over here for all the years. And we also have a waterfall chart uh, in this case for Zurich. This little tile is the PNL split per month. What I can do, I can tick it, tap to zoom. I can tick it and it automatically zooms in. If I untick it, it goes back to the original situation again. Well, I hope you've got an overview of what we can do with Design Studio 1.6. Again, I'm online connected. The uh, capabilities, especially using the dynamic cross tab, are limitless to the end users. They can basically create any or data exploration view like they want. And the performance is, I think, very, very staggering. Thanks for your attention.